click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about what is a query processing and then we will know how we can produce and query and then process it. So first we need to produce it and then we will discuss about the steps to process a query. Finally, we will talk about how we can measure the query cost. That means in which way we should choose the query according to the demand of this needs on the user. <music> Querying is mean that we want to fetch some data from the database. So query needs a particular condition on which the user parts a particular portion on the database. So first to construct a query, we need to collect all the user's demands or the needs on which we can build the query. After that we have fetched a particular query, then we need to process it. That means first the query is needed by the user section, then it needs to be translated to the relational algebra portion, then it needs to plan a query evaluation. That means in which way we can evaluate the query. And finally, which evaluation plan we should choose among the query to get is a optimized one. So these are the main steps that involves in the query processing. Today we will discuss each of this query processing steps in details. First to build a query. Say for instance, we have instructor relation in a relational database. Now we are talking about only one relation as we want to exemplify what is a query. So now I want to detail all the instructor that has a salary greater than 50,000. So my conditions are one salary greater than 50,000. And number two, I want all the details. That means all the attribute names I should include. Now, either than all the attributes, I could have mentioned only a particular attributes like I want the name and department of each of the student on the instructor relation. Now, these are the two things that are my constructional basis for fetching a query. Now, the next part is to build a query. We can build a query within an SQL or any other query language that can be declarative or a procedural. But first we need to build the query. So using the SQL, we can build a query like, now my build up query is select the attribute name that is the second condition is being satisfied. Now from the instructor, that means it should get the value from the instructor relation, where that means here it suggests the condition. So my first condition is getting satisfied that salary is greater than equals to 50,000. So in this way, we can build up a query. Now we will use to parse this data and translate into some relational algebra. So we cannot perform any of the task other than any operation or algebraical operation is performed to it. It can be a set operation, it can be an arithmetic operation, it can be a selection, projection, any of the operations but we need to build it on some operation basis. See for the first one, we need a selection operation. That we need to from a database select a particular condition. The next one is the projection operation that we are projecting something over the particular database. So we could have project the, all the databases belonging to the selection or a particular projection onto the selection. So now, if we build up a query processing steps, so it will involve the following. So first the query is being fetched to the parser and the translator. So the parser and the translator translate this one to a relational algebraical expression. Now the relational algebraical expression should stand for this one as so we are first projecting the all instructor relation, that is the all tuple and all the values from the instructor relation. Then from that projection, we are selecting which salary is greater than 50,000. And first we are having the name and department from the instructor relation and then remodifying with the condition salary is greater than 50,000. Now we can have also another relation algebraical expression from this query. 
Now here we can see that first we are selecting from the instructor relation that whose salary is greater than 50,000, selecting all attributes from that relation. Now from the selection, we are fetching the projection only the name and department. So which one is cost effective? Which one we should choose among these two? Because these two already need number one and two number of query. And also this one need one and two number of query. So in the query evaluation plan, that will, we can build on this one. Then we can have the database on the specialized data. Now how we can achieve this? Now we can achieve this with the help of an optimizer. So the optimizer looks for that which will generate number of costs for each of this relational algebraical expression that is translated from that particular query. So now the query optimizer will look for this query and see that the first one needs only these two projection. So we are shorting it down and after that we are again shorting it down with this salary greater than 50,000. But when you are selecting the 50,000 greater than on this instructor relation, then we have all the name and attributes, but shorting it down with the salary greater than 50,000. So this approach is more correct to this query because we are more closer to have the salary greater than 50,000 at the first step. So we are first omitting all the possibilities that doesn't have any clue with our relational query. So it is always better to first select then project other than this then project or the select. Now if we build on this type of general rules, then we can say that if there is also the projection of all the attributes, it could have been the better one. So here why we will always select or try to select at least the selection before the projection. So that will enhance our query and these rules are generally defined by this query optimizer. Now the query optimizer will generate from this query or the relational algebraical options that we have and it will generate a query evaluation plan. The query evaluation plan actually takes up all the subqueries or the partial queries that we can provide within this relational algebraical expression and then build up the steps by which it will follow to evaluate the query. Say for if we take this two and if we have selected this one over this one, then we will go for the evaluation plan of the second one. Now how does the evaluation plan looks like? Now this is an evaluation plan that we have constructed from the last evaluation algebraical expression that we build up on the query. Now this one shows that the instructor relation is the first one or as the input, then we need the selection operation. After then we need to perform the projection operation. So actually it goes from downwards to the upwards direction. That means it's follow a tree like structure where the root node is the uppermost or the outermost operation to perform on the query and the leaf node or the children are the last one or this initial one to perform this query. Now here if we mention that index one that means we are creating an index over this selection operation. That means all my selection will be given an index and which will be specified with the salary. So if the salary is 51,000, it will go up for the particular section or the instructor who has got this 51,000 salary, 55,000, 57,000 like this. So if we create an index over the selection operation, then it takes the value or the attribute of that particular value on which the selection is happening and use that as an index attribute and use the index for this projection operation. So now when we have the salary greater than 50,000, then the index will be based on the salaries that is greater than 50,000 and obviously there will be groups like for 51,000, 52,000, 55,000 and like this. So here we are using the grouping of the indexing that is a clustering index. That means one index attribute can point to many of the values. Like there can be many instructor group to this 51,000 salary. So now the evaluation plan is built up. Now we need to perform the execution of the query. So we need to give this evaluation prompt to this evaluation engine. 
After that, we have given the evaluation engine that will evaluate the query, get up the details from the exact relation, and then build the output to the query. So the user can only see the building of the query and the result of the query. But the computer systems goes on for all these steps to achieve this query processing. Now while we are optimizing a query that is from the transfer of relational algebraical expression to the evaluation plan, then we can have a support of specialized database features that is like indexing. So the indexing and hashing will improve it while the projection on this outermost operation are there. So now we will sketch out a plan for our query processing and see that which flow will help us to get us the exact query processing plan. First we have our query. Next the query has been built up by the user so the parser and the translator will then parse the data from the query and then translate to some relational algebraical expression. So if we derive it with an ERD, then we can have the query as an input, then the function that can be performed to it is the parsing and translating. Now after the parser and translator has translated the data, so the output will be a relational algebraical expression. Now again it will be optimized on some statistics with the data. <clears throat> now the data statistics is given to the optimizer to achieve our final optimizing. So the optimization will now give us the evaluation plan. Now the evaluation plan will be given to the execution engine. Now the execution engine will use the data that means the actual data that can be fetched from this data relation and then have the output as the query to the result. So this is the flow diagram for having the query, translation, then optimization, then execution. So these are the three steps that process for an query processing. So now we will talk about how we can measure this query processed and get the optimization. So at this optimization step, there is one more thing that we need to calculate or measure that is the cost to the query. Now what is the cost to the query? We have to calculate each of the block transfer and the sick time. Now what do you mean by block transfer? We can say that the block transfer is the block of data that need to transfer from the disk block to the main memory to evaluate the query. How many times the disk need to be seeking of the data so that it can get the exact desired output? So now how to use this one, we will see some formulas. So if B are the blocks to transfer and S are the number of 6, now the tuple from any two relation T and S that are the tuples that we need to calibrate it from the disk system to our in memory. Now we can have that we this time in this disk calibration will happen in B into TT plus s into ts seconds because the tt is the tuple that is in build input or the block that is already in memory so we do not need to seek it from the disk and also the s is the seek time for this every tuple that is stored in the disk memory and we need to seek it from the calibration on the disk from the main memory so this is the number of seconds that we can have of achieving and disk or block transfers now the next one is response time. See if the CPU is more attached with a function later than this one disk. So how this disk one will respond? Say there are many input output functions, scheduling functions of CPU that it need to consider along with the block transfer and the seeking. So then the time that it need to wait for the response of the block that is to be transferred and seeked from the disk is the response time to it. So we can calculate the response time as, so the response time is the BB that is the block of this buffer. We know that CPU always use a buffer memory for which the disk or to the main memory comparison or transfer first need to be hold on the buffer and then we can have that buffer set to be in this in memory. Now what is the use of this buffer block or BB? The buffer block actually holds the data from the disk memory and then while having it transferred to the in memory, the CPU can perform other tasks. 
So depending on this buffer block, it will depend that how much time it takes for the responding. So if there is more number of buffer blocks, then it will be lesser response time. And if there are lesser number of buffer blocks, then it will take a large number of time to response. Now the buffer block multiplied by the number of tuples are there. Say suppose a buffer block can afford to store five tuples for a relation. Another buffer block can afford to store 100 blocks or the tuples of relation. So it is also depending on the size of the buffer block that how much data it can store within a buffer block. Now it is divided by the blocks that is holding the actual data. So if B is the block that is holding for a relation, then we have the response time for BB into TS by B. That is the buffer blocks for holding tuples of data divided by the block or the number of block that is storing inside this disk. Now as we know that if the disk is storing some data and we are manipulating it from there to transfer it to the in-memory for the execution plan. Now the optimization is very important in this step because it's calculate that which of the selection and projection on this query processing will have this response times lower and also the sick times greater. Because if the response time is lower, then the execution plan will be more faster on this engine. So the CPU will be involved lesser times and it will executing the query on its own because there are more number of buffer blocks available to us. Now, if this blocks number is higher, that means there are a multiple disks available for the relation. Then also it will take a lesser number of response time. As we know, if the numerator of this particular fraction grows, then it will actually have a more response time, but the denominator grows, it will lesser the fraction. So that means if the blocks or the disk blocks that is more available to us, so we have more disk, that means if there is a failure to one disk then we can try the other disk to fetch the data from it while being the recovery of the first disk so also the blocks on the disk that the data is storing is needed and it's absolutely important for the optimization of data now that the execution is done on some indexing so the index cost will be added to it that is we can add the index cost per block on this buffer Say each buffer is being indexed with some particular condition. So if we can index with according to the condition, that is salary greater than 50,000, and we are making the index on this salary field. So if we are going in this way, then we can say that for the 51,000, we have a buffer, 55,000, we have another buffer. So it can go and move in like this to have achieved the response time lower. Now, as this indexing itself causes a level of indirection added to this original table, so it is now added to the response time because we need to fetch the index table to from our relation. So this way the optimization measured the cost for each of the sick time, response time, blocks of transfer, numbers of six, and then compare between the evaluation plan, then which one to choose among this query processing. Now at the last step where the query execution using the data part, then also where the data is residing is depending on this disk blocks. So not only the evaluation plan on the selection and projection, also the disk blocks that we need to transfer for the data or the indexing matters for the cost of this query processing. So the query processing needs about the particular relational algebra expression choice, also the cost of the six blocks and also the indexing on that basis. So all three involves the cost to measure the query. Now this is all for the query processing. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.